going on you guys welcome back channel anderson today we're going to be deep diving into the mo55 let's go all right so we got quite the work set out for us a couple of different things i'll run you guys through that have been going on with the car um little things to big things and things that i've known about and need to take care of so starting off in here the valve covers and the motor in general are just disgusting you guys have seen this a few times and yeah it's time it's been time for a while so um that's gonna get taken care of uh what else uh the coolant for some reason i keep getting like a coolant light coming on and off and i've tried to like bleed it again and then refilled it topped it off um and after that, I, I don't know, it's hot right now, so it's not at the proper level, so I gotta wait till it cools down, but it's every once in a while when I stop it after driving, you'll hear the expansion tank bubbling. And if you know about anything in motors, if you hear that, a lot of times, that can be a sign of a head gasket going bad. But for the M113, that's really rare for a head gasket to be gone like that. Um, and the motor is still performing fine. I'm not, it's not acting weird or doing anything weird, so um very low possibility of that being the case fingers crossed but uh, we've already kind of taken a look at things and nothing points to a head gasket directly um when we undid the cap or when i undid the cap after running it um there wasn't a ton of pressure in it which if you have a blown head gasket it normally has a lot of pressure so that's another good sign um that could also mean the bubbling and all that, it could just mean that it's still low and it doesn't have all that it needs to have in it. And that could be a very real possibility because we recently did the water pump on it and it, they're self bleeding, but you know, chances are when I was first filling it up after that, I probably didn't put enough coolant into it um, because you know, maybe I was paying attention to the level in the expansion tank and it wasn't cycling all the way through the motor and filling all the cavities. So it's very likely that it just needs to get refilled. So it's not exactly on the top of my like priority worry list right now, but it's definitely something to be concerned about. Um, until I nail down exactly what it is, I've been looking around and there's a, a little bit of wetness um, at the bottom. And there does seem to be like, you know, it appears, I don't know, it's dark down here, but it appears like maybe some dried coolant down here not not anything major anything ton so i'm gonna double check all the clamps on the silicone hoses that we use and just make sure that nothing is uh seeping through so i'll take the pan off underneath and take a better look um but right now before we start pulling anything off and because i got a lot of time to kill before i can even work on it because it's so hot right now after driving um i'm gonna try to get this cleaned up because it's just super dirty and you don't want to start pulling stuff off and letting that stuff fall into the open heads. So um, I'm going to try to basically hit this with some degreaser, rinse it off, and then after that, we'll be able to kind of dive in a little further. Some other weird things that have been going on with the car, um, the driver's side door lock. Let me find my key real quick. Now, for those that don't know as well, when I first bought the car, it came with a fob and it came with like a regular key that has an RDF chip in it. The story was that the previous owner could never get this one working. When I got this thing, it was like, oh, it's still kind of broken, but I fixed it using some other spare parts. This part's broken, but that happens all the time. But anyways, we basically just always use the flip key to unlock and lock the car, but um, this flip key, when I was trying to do anything, you can see it basically pulls the lock down, but it won't actually lock anything. And the likely cause of that is a little retainer spring that's on the actuator that basically dislodges and then you have to pull everything out to replace that. But because I don't know the condition of the door actuator and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to everything inside of here, pulling the panel off is real easy, but actually getting the door actuator out, you got to drill out like three or four rivets. Um, you have to pull, you know, the lock cylinder out of the door. So 
it takes quite a bit so i don't want to go in there twice um, or have to get in there think that i have you know just that little clip that i need to replace and then it ends up actually being the actuator so i just bought the actuator it was like 120 dollars from mb oem parts shout out to them uh, they're based out of napperville and you can get a discount code if you're on the 500e board you can find it so um I'm gonna be taking care of that in an upcoming video. There's not really many videos on that. There are some good ones, but not a ton. Um, my car doesn't really have like the machine, machine gun locking like is very notorious on the W163. Um, every once in a while though, like if I hit the middle lock button, I'll try it again, if I press lock. So sometimes, like the first time you guys saw it didn't do it, the second time it did so uh it could be you know possibly this one's going bad and that's what's causing that it could be the all activity module it could be a number of, you know one of the other door actuators but anyways there will be an upcoming video on all that stuff and one other thing before we get started i also have the g plus uh pcv hoses that i'm going to be throwing on to replace the regular rubber ones these are silicone you guys have seen the video where i put them on the c55 same exact process same exact thing so i probably won't show you guys much of this but these are one of the best values you can find for the m113 and m112s um, they're designated in a kit for e55 or no i think it's like e430 that's what they say the kit is for but that can translate to a lot of things w210 e430 uh, so that's where we got these hoses. They were not a perfect fit, which is why we still have this zip tie on here, just keeping it away from the oil cooler. Um, and the bottom one was a very close fit to the OEM one, but still wasn't perfect, but they worked. Um, so these are a direct fit though. These are super easy and the whole kit costs like 40 or $50. So if you know, these alone usually cost like 20 to $30. That's for the rubber ones and they are shot within like a year or two most of the time, especially if you're in a hotter climate. These will probably never go bad because they're silicone, they do fine with heat. So highly, highly recommend one of my favorite little goodies that I've found on the interwebs for these cars. All right, so my plan of attack, I'm not gonna go crazy on this. I'm gonna start with just kind of scrubbing this down. It's just a plastic bristle brush. Um, you already tell the difference. I was just doing this side a little bit. I'm gonna to try to just loosen up all the uh, big stuff up here on top. And then once we get that uh, side open and clear out of the coil packs and stuff, I'll probably hit it with some of this and then just spritz it with water. And then after that, I'll probably vacuum it or spray it out with um, air, shoot it, shoot it with air rather, compressed air. So we're not going crazy like full degreaser mode right now, but at least just get it cleanly enough to not have to worry about anything falling into the heads um, and just make it easy to see what's going on and make sure everything's clear so all right and for those who don't know one of the life hack for you especially if you're tall and you keep hitting your head on the hood while you're working um, you can put this in a service position it's not as easy as like the c classes with the little button but all you do is just undo um, the little retaining clips on the hood struts and just move it down to the second position you got to undo both of them so hold the hood up after you do one and then move over to the other side and you can see that's what they look like when they're undone a little bit so you just undo those move them to the spot and then clip those back in and now got a lot more working room without having to worry about hitting your head so all right guys i was uh blowing the top side out with compressed air and just took the coil packs off. So I'm gonna clean out all of this area as well. And then we'll go from there. All the coil packs are just sitting on the side right now. All right, so clean the side off a little bit more. Obviously it doesn't have to be perfect because once I get it actually off, it'll be a lot easier to clean. Just need to get all the big debris and uh, any crud out of the way. So when I pop them off, nothing's gonna fall in. All right, one other important thing I wanted to make sure I had in the bin before I got any further. Uh, these are the valve cover gaskets. Strongly, strongly, strongly suggest do not use the Victor Rain ones. Uh, Victor Rain's ones. Uh, I've heard that there's just fitment issues and sealing issues with those. But L Ring is the OEM manufacturer, so either get the L Ring ones or the OEM uh, Mercedes ones. These are from FCP Euro, and then I'm going to be using just 
some, you know, generic high temp silicone uh, for the breather covers. I had, I don't know where it went, but I have the Mercedes uh, gasket maker, but I don't know where it is, so I'll just use this. But here are those again, part numbers. All right, and then one other thing, if I do end up wanting to throw spark plugs in today, I'll be running. These are the same spark plugs I have in the C55 right now, uh, but just one step colder, I believe. Uh, BKR6ES-11. These are just regular, um, what people call copper, uh, nickel, alloy, or whatever they are. Um, regular spark plugs, nothing fancy, nothing special. They should last for about 20,000 miles or so. They do produce uh, a little bit better spark according to you know, the old gearheads and things like that. I don't know how true that is, but the C55 seems to really like them. Um, so I would end up running them in this. And 20,000 miles for these car, for example, I bought this thing uh, probably close to three years ago now. And I think we've only put 14,000 miles on it. So 20,000 miles is, you know, close to three years of time for me. So I don't mind doing spark plugs every three years. If it's something that you want to avoid at all costs and only do it every 100,000 miles, then just get the platinum or whatever, you know, fanciest plug you can get that you don't have to worry about um, checking or maintaining or anything like that. All right, next step up, I got the uh, first spark plug boot off. I'm going to go ahead and pull all the coils out. One handy tip as you guys are pulling these out, lay them out in the same order that they're, you know, coming out from so you can put them all back in the same place. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, you could switch the coils around. They're all the same part, piece number, et cetera. But, uh, you know, that's where they've lived the whole time. So might as well keep them in the same order. Um, and it also, you know, will allow you to keep all the spark plug wires in the same place. If you're changing those out, then it doesn't really matter. You're going to figure it out. But it is easier, too, if you can match them up when you get the new set of spark plug wires. In this case, uh, these wires still look really good. There's no, like cracking or anything weird on them uh thankfully it seems like uh, whoever did these last uh did put you know a good amount of the electric grease or something they didn't they didn't uh they weren't stuck on there too bad when i'm using a tool and for those that are wondering here is the uh, mercedes spark plug boot puller it's a 17 millimeter with just kind of like this funky bend on it you could easily replicate this tool or use something else i've used other stuff too but it is pretty handy honestly f Bureau sells it uh, you can get them on amazon i think i got this one off amazon actually for like 15 bucks or so so yeah a little helpful tool you want to get on um, this front portion basically and just find a good spot and then basically you're pulling it out this way and using the valve covered as leverage all right guys so those are all pulled out except for one you know the backs are always the hardest on either side and on ml55 because it has the like drive-by wire slash cable system it has this huge block of mess right above uh where you would normally attach this to so i tried you know this is not going to fit obviously i tried a regular 17 millimeter but can't really get the proper leverage on it. So I'm just struggling pulling off this last uh, boot. It's probably just gonna take some brute force here in a second, but um, yeah, just wanted to throw it out there so you guys could be aware. Um, I you know, possibly could undo these two and maybe get this out of the way just enough to use that wrench on there, but I don't know, and it seems like more work than it's worth. So I'm just gonna try to, manhandle it and get it off without doing it any damage fingers crossed all right so with another attempt and just being gentle i use this to get that last one off my recommendation for all of them and i probably mentioned this in the c55 video but um when you're doing these the easiest way is just be gentle with it and basically just leverage this and rock it back and forth until it just pops off and it'll come off easy when I first did the CBD5, and this can happen regardless if whoever did them didn't use some type of de-electric grease, um, I was like in a panic and frustration because the CBD5 boots were just locked on. There was nothing that I could do, so I ended up having to just tear them to pieces and 
get them out whatever way I could and replace them. I was gonna replace them anyways, but it made the job gruesome and a lot more time consuming. So if you are a Mercedes owner and you're doing this job, do the next owner or yourself a favor for the next time the job comes up, use a proper mount of the electric grease. And I like to grease up both ends, basically just put a little on these sides and be liberal with what you put on here. It's not gonna hurt anything and it's gonna make your life a lot easier or the next owner's life a lot easier whenever the next person has to get in to do this job. All right, guys, I've been working away. For those following me on Instagram, you guys have seen a little bit of a sneak peeks and stuff like that. Uh, I just was asking about these, which were a surprise to find actually. Um, these are a Bosch Platinum Fusion plug, like a four prong plug, uh, which definitely were not factory. But they do look to be in, I mean, fairly good shape. Um, so my thought had always been, because the car ran well, my thought's always been that, because I know the first owner took pretty good care of it, um, my thought was that they were probably changed out at 100,000 miles. Um, so it's at 162,000 now. The likelihood is that these were swapped in at 100K and they probably have a lot of life left in them. So I'm really torn right now which way I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna keep these um, and swap them back in or if I'm going to swap in the NGKs. Um, you know, it's easy to think just because it's kind of a job to do and while I'm in here, I might as well, but if these are still good, it's kind of pointless. Um, so yeah, we'll figure that out in a bit, I guess. I, I pulled the two out just because I was really curious before I pulled the valve cover gaskets off. They're a lot easier to get to once you have the valve covers off. So if you're going to do both of the jobs, just do them after you pull these off. But uh, just got all the bolts out for these. Make your life easier and just make a little map for yourself. All of them are, there's only two different sizes, I think. They're either like a medium um, length or really long ones. The four long ones go on the breather cover right there. And it's gonna be a little bit different on the passenger side, but that's for the driver's side. So I'll do the same thing once I get onto the passenger side. Um, but yeah, this thing should be ready to come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of brush around here one more time, take off those lines, uh, the two rubber hoses, and then we'll snake this thing out of here. All right, guys, valve cover is officially off. I've just been uh, going around and kind of wiping down the edges, making sure it's all clean. Um, so that a few little spots to get to, but everything looks good. The only weird thing I'm seeing is uh, this uh, rocker arm right here is, uh, I don't know, it looks like probably just grime on there. Try to uh, wipe it down and see if that will uh, come off, but I guess that's kind of weird. The rest of them uh, look good. Everything looks, I mean, how it should for the most part. Um, so I'll go in here and just kind of clean things up a bit. If I see anything, it doesn't look so good um, and go from there. So here we are. Progress is uh, just waiting on me at this point. Uh, I'm just trying to get everything real cleaned up and then I'm gonna try to put the gasket down um, the tricky part that everyone tells me is this back portion where it dips down. Um, so it, everyone's saying it's easy to flip the gasket at that part. So I'll just be real careful with Daryl with that part. Um, I may even set a little bit of, uh, silicone in there, just a tiny bit, uh, not much just to kind of like keep it at a standstill while I'm maneuvering everything in. But, um, overall, even though these weren't leaking like crazy, these are very dried out, so glad to be doing these. Um, the the prime problem that seems to be the case on most M113s, uh, the valve covers definitely do leak, but the bigger problem most of the time ends up being the uh, breather covers because they end up just seeping and seeping and seeping, and uh, a lot of times people don't even realize like that's where the leak is coming from. For example, on my CVD5, I thought for sure the valve cover gaskets were bad, but I ended up just doing the breather cover gaskets for the time being. And now the motor is completely dry after having resealed those. It has like 
a tiny weep that's starting on the passenger side valve cover um, somewhere in one of the corners I can't remember but like nothing to even worry about but a lot of times you can get away with resealing those breather covers and getting a lot more uh, life out of it without having to do the valve cover gaskets but in this case uh, definitely needed to be done the car needs just R&R &R and love at this point it's you know 160,000 miles um, I want to get it to you know 300 400 K if possible if we hang on to it that long so I want to treat it with love and uh, do all I can to uh, keep it maintained and running properly all right guys just went around all the edges with some brake clean and uh, just applied the brake clean to a rag and then wiped down the edges rather so it should be all good um, that rock around did end up cleaning off I just used a bit of brake clean on that as well and wiped it off I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like pinked metal or something it, it looks like it was just caked on oil that for some reason sat at that spot so um, should be good to go now all right guys we'll spend a little bit of time getting this clean it's not perfect there's no point in getting a perfect you can polish them and make them look really awesome but uh you know this thing is our family vehicle and not a show car and yep i'm not gonna spend the time to do that so maybe on the c55 um this one just cleaned it out brake clean and using that same stuff the super clean um got the outside and inside also not perfect but a lot cleaner than it was before all right guys next step almost ready to go i'm gonna go ahead and squeeze in my bead onto here sandwiching down and i'll wait a little bit before i compress it all the way just follow whatever gasket maker directions you're trying to do uh, or trying to use the other thing uh, that i will have to do one of the bolts i don't know if i showed you guys that but whoever did this last stripped out one of the bolts which they're easy to do but bad on them for leaving it in there uh, but luckily i had this laying around so just an allen head bolt and same thread but it's a little bit longer so i have to uh, trim it down to match up the size of these all right guys so i've been working away this is all sealed now gonna torque it down here in a second it's been quite a while um, just swapped out all the spark plugs i mean i could have kept running these i know but honestly um i'm not a big fan of the four four tip uh electrodes or whatever just because you know it's a greater chance of one of these snapping off and falling into a bad place so um i'd much rather run the old-fashioned plugs just because i don't know exactly how old these are and I mean, I've never even seen one of these in an M112 or M113. So, yeah, those will go bye-bye. And uh, all the NGKs are in. So the box is remaining on the floor. So next up, get the valve cover back on. Uh, put back the breather hoses, fuel line. And then I'll probably have to button things up. I'm probably going to have to leave this side for tomorrow because I'm running out of time. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, pick up once we got this thing ready to go. Man, the one thing I'm always super careful about <laughs> and I end up snapping the head off of these things. I know everyone always talks about these are super soft. Don't overdo them. Uh, I'm mad at myself for this. I just snapped the head off of it. It's right here. That was so dumb, man. It was just hard to gauge because it was like going into the silicone and uh, well... The other ones are torqued down. I'm basically going to cap this off with silicone right now because I'm out of time. Like I said, I'll have to revisit this. It shouldn't leak. It tightened at least before it snapped off. Uh, and at least it was the middle one. So the other two are anchoring it down pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and silicone this up. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to leave it. I don't have any other choice right now. All right, guys. After being very careful uh, and tightening all these down, there is a specific pattern, but honestly, you just kind of use common sense and do star pattern. Uh, and just make sure everything's going down evenly. Uh, everything seems to be sitting, or everything seems to be sitting well, um, from what I can see. And yeah, kind of feeling around the back there, making sure that one is good. Um, so yeah, everything's cool for now. Um, luckily, I just plugged that one up with silicone that I broke off. 
The good thing is um, the breather cover on this side gets held down by these additional um, valve cover bolts. So shouldn't be any issue right there. Uh, if it does become an issue, then obviously I'll take care of it. But um, yeah, that was my gaff. That's karma for talking crap about whoever stripped out that bolt. <laughs> so now got to put all of our coil packs in and very important tip as I'm probably not going to show much of this part of the process. Um, just put a gob of de-electric grease on each one of these. It'll make it a hell of a lot easier putting them on and a lot easier taking them off down the road. All right, well, a long while later, this side is all done and buttoned up. All right, well, that'll wrap up night one. We'll be back, like I said, for the other two. But already, it sounds noticeably different. It sounds good. So we'll see how it sounds once it's all complete. All right, guys, well, time travel, but it is now two nights later and we are ready to prepare the passenger side. Now, I don't know how much I'm gonna get done tonight, honestly. Uh, it's already pretty late and I don't feel like pulling an all-nighter. So we'll see. Um, the first thing I'm gonna start with is getting this intake tube off and then getting the throttle body off so I can replace the gasket in there because little common knowledge for the M113s, the original ones came with, they were like a rubber or silicone type gasket, I'm not sure, but they dry out and they end up just turning into mush and it'll cause like idle fluctuation or kind of weird like surging. And I've noticed this car has started to not idle as smooth as normal. It's not anything crazy but um, I want to replace that with the updated part, which is a green, uh, I think nitrile based um, rubber compound or whatever it is, but it's an O-ring that goes between the throttle body and the intake manifold. So I'm gonna get that off, clean it and replace that. And then we'll see how I'm looking for time. I have to get all that out of the way anyways to do the valve cover gasket and it would help to do the spark plugs and stuff too. So. I'm going to start with that job and then we'll go from there. Uh, you can see it's wet over here right now because I just sprayed some rust converter on this. Um, should turn black in a little while. I can always hit it with some black paint if not, but it doesn't bother me too much. I just make, want to make sure it doesn't keep going because these battery trays are notorious for rusting on W163s and other chassis as well. So trying to take care of it now before it becomes a real issue. The rest of the box, like actually underneath the battery, uh, doesn't really have much. Uh, it's just this one part that for some reason is starting to rust up. Nothing bad, but uh, rather stop it now before it does get bad. Um, this side, driver's side, everything's holding up solid. Uh, no leaks, nothing. It's looking good. Um, good news as well for the coolant. I filled it up to the proper level and we've been driving it for the past two days and no bubble sounds when I'm uh, turning it off after driving for a while, no coolant light, no anything. It's been running at fine temperatures. So fingers crossed that it was just didn't have enough coolant in it. So we'll keep an eye on that and I'll update you guys uh, either in this video or the next video. So yeah, anyways, let's get this off. We have, I believe a couple, uh, Looks like one E-Torx bolt and one regular bolt. Looks like maybe 10 millimeter or so. Maybe an E, E10, E8. Maybe it looks pretty small. Um, actually, no, they look like the same size as valve covers. So maybe E12 and a 10 millimeter or so. So get those off and then I'll update you guys. It's going to take some finessing getting this out of here. And I'll definitely loosen those um, nuts on the coolant reservoir too. All right, guys, we've done manual swaps on the channel, EGR deletes, secondary air deletes, all kinds of exhaust work, suspension work, control arm bushings. This is one of the most annoying, difficult <laughs> jobs on Mercedes I've encountered, to be honest. God, what a hassle. Getting this thing out. Big shout out to uh, the YouTube channel L35 in Colorado. Uh, she's a Mercedes mechanic and puts some really good videos out for, especially for W163 platform. But um, 
gave me a few pointers like undoing those bolts obviously but also uh, getting a little space with the expansion reservoir and shows on video like how to kind of snake this thing out but even with that it is difficult um tips recommendations this thing is going to get caught on that bottom portion of the coolant reservoir especially where that screw bracket is placed um, so you kind of have to hold this down as you're wiggling it out uh, once it gets to right around that point and then you're basically fighting because you have this clasp getting caught on stuff and this one getting caught on stuff. You basically just have to wiggle them around and try to get them out as best you can. Um, if you still have the reservoir or the, the resonance reservoir thing or, or resonance, whatever you want to call it, um, take that thing off. You guys know I deleted mine a long time ago. I just basically leave this on as a cap. Um, and yeah, besides that, it's just going to take some finagling no matter what um so uh now getting to the throttle body i'm basically going to be working blind even more so than i would be on the c55 on the c55 you can actually see basically down from the top but on this one it'll be me and a trusty mirror trying to see what the heck is going on back there um and yeah i do plan on doing uh, an EGR delete and a secondary air delete on this car as well. Coming up here, um, probably over winter. So that would definitely make working back here a little bit easier. You can see the EGR is definitely blocking what little room is back here. Um, and secondary air, I mean, I just don't really feel like it's worth it to have. So just creates a little more room in the engine bay. So two things that'll be coming up but for now let me get my mirror back here and see exactly what we got going on for that throttle body all right guys the one important step before you ever pull the throttle body off make sure you can find the gasket <laughs> as you can see i had to pour through my parts bins for both the c55 and the ml55 and i knew i had it <laughs> but it took some uh searching to find it um part number for this i can pop up on screen or put it in the description down below. Uh, I got this from FCP a, a while ago, knowing that I would eventually do this one day. So um, yeah, it's good to keep stuff like this on hand because you never know. And like I said, figured I'd be doing it eventually. So we're gonna now get that throttle body off. I think they're like T30 something torques. I'll tell you guys once I start getting them off and then we will swap this in and clean off that throttle body. Would you look at that? Look what else I happened to find <laughs> in my bag or box of parts. An extra breather cover bolt. That would have come in handy a few days ago. Oh well. Got spark plug sitting there ready. Throttle body gasket. Let's get this throttle body out. Alright guys, well after a little bit of time and finagling again seems to be the word for the day for this job. Or for the jobs that I'm taking on. Throttle body is out gasket is out and let me walk you through a couple tricky things as you're doing this so number one the throttle body sits in there so this is what would be facing the firewall um, so your top portion that's where your uh, what's it called uh, brake booster line and your pcv lines plug into right there so you can snake those out as you're pulling it down um, and then it, it comes out really easy, but the tricky part is the connector. And it was really hard to find any videos or any information on these because um, I didn't want to break anything. But I just kind of referenced a few things online and took my best guess at it. And you can see those two prongs on each side. There's basically plastic tabs that sit on top of those. And you basically have to get a small screwdriver flathead and on one side at a time, try to force one side over and then try to like hold it open or keep it open with your finger while you open the other side and then the connector will slide right out. Now notice on the connector, and I'll show you on the uh, vehicle side as well. Let me get the light so you can see. 
Um, let's get it down here. This connector uh, has two plugs missing, the one and the, I don't know what numbers are, the two and four, sorry. So two and four connectors are missing and those will match up if you look inside the throttle body. So when you plug this back in, make sure you plug it in the correct orientation. I believe it will go like this, but I'll have to double check and I'll update you guys once you put it back in. Um, it's gonna be hard to get you guys a view of what it actually looks like in the intake manifold, but not the prettiest. No idea if you guys can see any of that, but it's definitely pretty dirty in there. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about, you know, giving that a crazy cleaning or anything. More so, just going to clean this off. And, yeah, the back of the butterfly is definitely coated. So, I'll probably notice a little bit um, on idle or maybe throttle response. Um, but this is where... Like I said, <laughs> this thing is, I, I don't even know if this is an actual gasket. I think somebody might have been in here and used uh, RTV, possibly. It's hard to tell. It's definitely got RTV on it. Uh, it could be a gasket originally, and it's still pretty pliable, actually, but um, you never know what the condition of that is going to be when you pull these out, so good to replace it doesn't look like there was any leaks um possibly but it doesn't look like it just from a quick examination so i'm not going to waste much more time i'm just going to get in here use brake clean carb cleaner and uh, clean this out be careful as you're working of course there are electronics surrounding this so i'll probably be wetting a rag and then just getting in here and wiping it down um and be careful as well like when you're moving the throttle plate not to uh you know go too excessive or um try not to move it at all if possible uh, because you know these are sensitive and this thing is pretty old now so don't want to uh, mess up the motors inside and etc uh, so here's that nitrile gasket you guys already saw this earlier but when I put this in, I'll probably coat it with a tiny bit of RTV just to kind of hold it in place as I'm sandwiching it down. There is a groove that it sits into. Uh, you might have saw that when I was trying to show you guys what the inside of the intake manifold looks like. So it sits in that groove and then this just gets mounted flush on top of that. So good little tip, either use like some de-electric grease or silicone or something that will keep it in place as you're going to put this on. So yeah, enough talking, let's clean this thing up. All right guys, throttle body is clean. A little bit of brake clean and being careful with the rag. And it looks a lot better than before. Now remember, just listening to the sounds. This thing does not need to be perfect. I mean, it's gonna get dirty again, so don't spend like all night and a day on it, but you know, getting it clean to the point where you can see all the metal surrounding should be good to go. One other thing that we have been sitting on are these breather hoses so while we're in here it's very easy to just pull this out as one big assembly and replace all these hoses um, so let's line them up basically this is this one on the far side the shorter one goes right here uh, bigger one that connects to the um, actual throttle body goes there or not the throttle body but the intake tube right there is that one and then this one which these are there it is sits like that so i'm gonna get these all hooked up and then go from there all right so there it is assembled with the new ones on here they look a little bit longer when you have it out like this but they flex quite a bit and you don't have to worry about them breaking or anything like that so this side is like maybe a tiny bit longer. These are pretty close. Um, and like I said, these make life so much easier down the road if you ever need to take them off. They're no problem. You're not gonna have to worry about them getting all hard and brittle. Um, it's a one-time job after this basically, so it's cool. Um, 
and for example like these ones i put these on when i bought the car i think got these off fcp euro and they're fine but you can already tell like the rubber is not feeling too hot especially like where they like this one sits on you know basically right on one of the heads and it's just doesn't feel right anymore this one's already super hard so yeah definitely a worthwhile investment they come with um the locking um clamps but honestly i've been running them on the c55 for quite a while now and they never even come close to coming off on all of the grip points uh the only one that i've noticed that like sometimes wants to snake off is this end here which connects to that portion on the breather cover um but besides that uh they pretty much stay put so we'll snake this back in there and get that gasket on there put the throttle body back in and then we'll move on to phase two of the job getting this cleaned up and ready to be replaced all right guys well nowhere to see back there but we have finished a totally pain in the butt job um the throttle body on the c55 is actually pretty easy but on this man it is just difficult um with the egr right there and just no room to work because of the expansion tank it's uh tough to say the least my recommendation leave the pcb uh system off until afterwards you got enough room to snake it in there and the brake booster line after you place the throttle body on so just do yourself a favor put the throttle body on first then you can put that stuff otherwise it just makes it even more difficult to try to line the bolts up all right so next up i'm gonna get all the coil packs off of here and uh get some degreaser on here not gonna go crazy cleaning but i just want to make sure all the edges are clear so no debris can fall into the engine when i pull the valve cover off all right guys i've gotten it clean enough to be safe to pull this uh, valve cover off so now begins the uh, easy process of just getting all these e12 bolts off um e12 or e10 i keep forgetting but um yeah this one luckily besides the fact that i'm gonna have to go through the pain of putting that intake on after this uh there is a lot more room though to work on this side so it shouldn't be too bad all right so here is the passenger side valve train pretty much more of the same what we saw on the other side a few uh dark spots where oil is kind of caked on a bit but besides that everything looks pretty good here's the uh, valve cover after being removed and there is the old and new gasket waiting to go in uh, but we got to do the spark plugs first so i have those sitting over here go ahead and remove all the old ones see what kind of shape they're in hopefully they're uh, comparable to what came out on the driver's side don't presume they wouldn't be but uh let's get them out and we'll see well guys <laughs> that would focus I think it is safe to say we found our misfire, most likely. <laughs> this thing is uh, not looking so hot. I think the whole, wow, yeah, the whole porcelain inside and the electrode is broken. It's literally just wiggling inside of there. So, that's probably where that lumpy idle came from and also where it threw a random check engine light one time when I was getting on it on the freeway. Whew. Well, good thing I'm changing them out. All right, guys, I didn't show you this on the last one, but here is the gasket installed. Um, already sealed up the breather cover as well. Um, so everything is ready to go on. Like I said, we're not trying to win any car shows with this, but it's clean, it'll do the job. And uh, I went around the edges with some brake clean uh, to make sure that surface is clean and good to go. It's a little bit tricky getting this one off just because of the uh, trans dipstick 
and the oil dipstick. So you gotta kind of uh, weasel it in and yeah. So see how I get it back in. Hopefully not too much of an issue. I did um, RTV these corners on both of the kind of uh, half circles. So should stay in place, no problem. And the gasket fits perfectly. So shouldn't have any issues. All right, guys, we are on the home stretch. Last thing left to do, get the uh, intake hose back on, which is going to be super fun. Not looking forward to that. And then just kind of buttoning everything up, plugging the MAF, plugging all the PCV hoses. I'm going to try to uh, attach this hose before I... Um, put this in because once this is in there, this is really hard to get onto there. So I'll just attach it beforehand. Update you guys in a second. All right, that was officially the worst car experience. I don't know. I don't know if I can say that, but <laughs> this was one of the most painstaking mechanical jobs I've ever done or maintenance jobs or whatever you want to call it it was brutal I'm also tired it is into the early hours of the morning now it's no longer night and I'm exhausted um, I'm excited to see how it drives and I'm excited to sleep I'll check in with you guys tomorrow for a uh, last little update all right guys just wanted to finish this video up real quick it's been about a week since we completed these and everything seems to be holding up well uh no leaks or anything anywhere breather covers everything's good um so yeah very happy to have this done that was a long night of working at the end of that video it was close to 4 a.m so um definitely save yourself some time if you know you're going to do this job uh, especially if it's your first time in there uh, the throttle body elbow um, or intake elbow connect to the throttle body is the most difficult part on these um, it's just no room to work and not fun so hopefully this video helps you somewhat and the other thing um, i did end up replacing the radiator cap just or i mean expansion tape cap so i felt like it was uh i could hear it hissing a little bit while I was working on it um, it just wasn't sealing properly so just threw this new one on there hopefully that will uh, solve that issue but anyways go ahead and uh, hear it start up right now Well, that'll go ahead and wrap this one up hopefully you found it helpful like i said and we'll catch you guys on the next one peace